as early as next week, but will not happen while the president is overseas. We're joined now by Allison Posner, the advocacy director at the Catholic Legal Immigration Network, and Jonathan Keim, a lawyer at the Judicial Crisis Network. To both of you, is this within the president's authority to act without congressional approval? Jonathan? Well, this administration has a disturbing pattern uh, of ignoring the rule of law. And uh, whether it's rewriting Obamacare because it doesn't like how the statute uh, works and would like to work, make it work a different way, or whether it's any number of other executive actions that have been taken through a pen and phone sort of um, mechanism, um, this administration is ignoring the constitutional separation of powers, which places the power to create laws, to change the law, with Congress and not with the president. So why is he able to do this? He did something similar with the Dreamers. The president, uh, so the president's previous action with the Dreamers um, was questionable in a couple of ways, but there are a couple different pieces of it. The first piece was, uh, was not enforcing the law as written. Uh, this, this would potentially be a problem um, given that the president would not be taking care that the laws be faithfully executed, which is what the Constitution requires the president to do. However, uh, there's a doctrine called prosecutorial discretion, uh, which the president invoked uh, in imposing um, the Deferred Action um, Program, well, DACA is the name of it, um, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Uh, and by using prosecutorial discretion in that way, the administration was, was choosing its strongest constitutional claim. Uh, the problem, however, is that uh, what it did with the Dreamers was also issue a variety of uh, authorizations or uh, explicit um, uh, taking action rather than refusing to take action. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it, that puts it in a different constitutional category. Okay. And the president had no authorization to do that. Allison, if the president doesn't act, what happens to undocumented immigrants? I mean, there is a major concern there, especially with Catholics. We, I mean, we care about, about their futures. Absolutely. This is something that the Catholic bishops have been calling for for decades now is these changes. And families, families will continue to be separated and people will continue to struggle and to live in fear if action's not taken. That's why whether it, it, certainly congressional action would be the best option, but we certainly are in need of something right now. What are you, what are you seeing, Allison? I mean, you deal with real people, with real lives, with real problems who are uh, undocumented. Sure, no, that's exactly it. The, the system is broken. That's what we're seeing is that uh, the backlogs in the courts, the backlogs in the family system, someone who petitions for a family member right now may be waiting 20 years, 18, 20 years for their family member. And so um, I think, Again, it's time to act, and we have to keep families together. Mm -hmm. Quickly, Jonathan, do you see gridlock ahead with this issue? I do. Uh, unfortunately, the president had the opportunity uh, several years ago when his party controlled both houses of Congress to pass legislation uh, that would deal with this problem. Uh, instead, he put it off and uh, put it in himself in a position where he's going to have to go around the law, pick a fight with Congress mm -hmm. and the American people. I'm sure we'll be talking to both of you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us.